Hi, Susie Rhodes with Past Masters. This week's student question is options hedging. So how do we answer these questions about how to use options to hedge a position? Help me to understand how to use options to hedge a long or short stock position. Hedging with options will be on the Series 7, Series 66, and Series 65 exams. Let's go to the Level 1 options chart. Even though this isn't really a Level 1 topic, it's going to be very helpful. I'll show you how to use it. So with stock, we are either long or short. We're going to start by being long shares of Apple. So when you are long a stock, tell me this, are you bearish or bullish? You are bullish. You hope that this primary position works out. You hope that shares of Apple go up in value over time. The hedge has to have the opposite direction arrow. The hedge is going to protect you. So on the level one options chart, we have two positions that have down arrows. So the most intuitive hedge for being long a stock is to buy a put. Buying a put is bearish. But we can also hedge our long position. Where's the other down arrow? by selling a call. So selling a call also has a bearish arrow. So that the better hedge is going to be buying a put. I'm gonna show you how these work. But you could also sell a call. So two ways to hedge a long stock. They both have down arrows. They are both bearish. You want your hedge to cover where the risk is. And when you're long a stock, the risk is that the price could go down. So let's start by buying a put. You own 100 shares of Apple you bought today when the current market price was 171.62. 171.62. So you're out of your pocket. This is your inventory position, 171.62. So we look at all of the puts that we could buy. Let's buy a put that is really close to our inventory position. So a lot of times as I practice in the course, when I teach with you in the course, I buy an option at the same exact price as the inventory. I can't do that in this story using real world numbers. I can get close though. So we are going for this option contract that has a strike price of $170. So we're gonna buy a put. Buy one apple, June 170 put at 11.25. So the premium is out of our pocket, 11.25. This is our break even. In order to make money, we have to be able to sell our shares of Apple at $182.88, more than break even. 182.87 is break even. Break even consists of what we paid for the stock plus the premium we paid to buy the downside risk insurance to buy the put. Double check with your calculator. You can never trust my math. Sweet. So let's just say that the market crashes and Apple's trading for 120. Oh, we're so glad that we bought this put. What does the put allow us to do? It allows us to sell the shares at the strike price. We bought a put with a strike price of $170. 
So how much are we going to lose? We're going to lose per share $12.87. So $1,287 will be our total loss in this story. Another way to look at it that I want to show you, so if you hate this, don't worry about it, but I think some students will like this conversation. Let's see. We paid for the shares $171.62, and we bought a put that allows us to sell the shares at $1.62 less. So that that is the most per share of a loss that we're going to encounter. So just on the share, not talking about the put at all, the cost of the put at all yet. So that if the price is 120 or 110 or 70 or 40 or $12, we can, you know, pretend that the market contracts that much before June. How much money are we going to get when we sell our shares? We're going to get $170. So the most that we would lose there would be $1.62. So $1.62 plus how much did it cost us to buy the put? $11.25 is $12.87. That's the most that you can lose in this story. I hope that helps. These can be a lot and I don't know. I, I'm a nerd and I love doing it. So practice. T-chart for level two options when we're using options as hedges. So long a stock, long a put. The other hedge is to sell a call. Let's look at that. Let's say you bought your shares of Apple today. You own 100 shares of Apple. You paid $171.62. So this is money that you're out of your pocket, 171.62. This is your inventory position. And you sold a call. So you're gonna sell a call. So let's think about this. If it were me, I would do the most out of the money call so that I can collect the premium, $9.95, and I hope by June that the shares are not called away. So I collect the premium of $9.95. It protects my downside risk only by the amount of premium collected. So if the market price goes down, my break even is my inventory position of 171.62 minus the premium that I collected of $9.95. So that if the market price of Apple should go below 161.67, I would be losing money if I sold my shares for less than break even. If the price goes up, but not above the strike price because I sold one Apple June 185 call at 9.95. So if at expiration, let's say Apple is at 183, the option cannot be exercised. I do not have to sell my shares. I made some money. So people that own stock, when the stock price moves kind of sideways or the inventory position is much lower than the current market price, when they sell covered calls, they're just collecting premium. So long as the shares don't get called away, they're usually pretty happy about that, right? Collecting premium and having to do nothing sounds like a great idea to me. It's when the shares get called away that they actually have to fulfill their obligation and sell their shares at the strike price. So if the market price was 182 at expiration, we've got a strike here of 185. There is nothing that, that the seller of the call is going to have to do. If at expiration, Apple was above the strike price of 185, I would have to sell the shares at 185, limiting my upside profit potential. Selling a call as a hedge on a long position only protects the downside risk by the amount of premium collected and limits the upside profit potential on the long stock. The most I can make in this position, no matter how high Apple goes, would be $23.33 per share, $2,333 total. I have sold a promise to sell shares at 185. I collected a premium of $9.95 for that obligation. 
194.95 minus the cost of my Apple inventory, 171.62. So that is hedging a primary position that is long a stock. You could either buy a put or you could sell a call. You could be short a stock. Being short a stock means that you have sold shares that you do not own, but shares that you have borrowed. Shorting a stock is bearish. You expect the market price to go down. Where is the risk? The risk is that the market price could go up. So we can use two different options to hedge the risk on a short sale. We can buy a call or we can sell a put. When you're short a stock, you're bearish. The hedge has to have an up arrow. Buy a call or sell a put. So you want the hedge to protect where the risk is. When you're short a stock, if the price goes down, you profit. If the price goes up, you lose money. So let's look at some examples here. Let's say that you shorted 100 shares of Apple today. Money in or out on your T-chart? It's money in 171.62. So the risk is that if Apple goes up, you'll lose money. If Apple goes down, you'll make money. So we hedge by buying a call. If Apple goes up. So let's see which one do we want to buy. Let's buy, let's mix it up. Let's do a different one. Let's buy this one. You buy one Apple June 175 call at $14.75. So the $14.75 is the premium that you had to pay, $14.75. If between now and June, the price of Apple trades in the market at a price above the strike price of $175, you can cover your short and pay per share the strike price. So we have on the out here, we have the premium, and then we have the strike price. So we're out the premium, we're out the strike price to exercise the call. We were in the market price of 171.62. So that no matter how high Apple goes, we know how much we'll lose per share, $18.13. So $1,813 is the most that we can lose with this option, this call as our hedge. If the price goes down, we're happy. We don't have to exercise our call. We had what we wanted to have happen, happen. When you short a stock, you are bearish. You want the price of Apple to go down. No matter how high Apple goes, though, in this position, the most you can lose, $18.13 a share. The most common way to hedge a short sale would be to buy a call, but you can also sell a put. In that case, you are only protecting your upside risk by the amount of premium that you have collected. So let's do an example. You shorted 100 shares of Apple today at 171.62. So this is money in your pocket, 171.62. And you're going to sell a put. So this is your short sale proceeds. And then on the positive side is also going to be the premium that you have collected. You sold one Apple June 170 put at 11.25. So the premium in your pocket, 11.25. So in your pocket so far, $182.87 per share. Where is the risk when you short a stock that the price could go up? If the price goes above 182.87, you will be losing money if you have to cover at a price above. 182.87. So that is your break even. Let's say in June that the current market price of Apple is 140. What are you going to have to do? You're going to have to buy shares of Apple at $170. Okay, 
because you sold a put with a strike price of 170. So you make per share $12.87. The most you can make $12.87. No matter how low Apple goes, you have limited your profit potential to $1,287 times 100 shares, right? Because you have sold a put, which is an obligation to buy shares for more than they're currently worth. So that is level two options. Use the T chart. We are looking to hedge our primary position. We always hope that the primary position works out. So whether or not we're long a stock or short a stock. So if you're long a stock, you hope the price of the stock goes up. If you're short a stock, you hope the price of the stock goes down. And we can use options as hedges for our primary positions. I hope you learned something. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and turn those notifications on. If you would like to check out Past Masters course offerings, there is a link in this video's description. Keep up the good work. I hope to have you as a student soon. Happy studies. Study, 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 pass.